talks about not seeing groups as homogenous, um, but I think on a national scale, many organisations do see these groups as homogenous. Whenever I see the two groups that I'm involved with and I'm a member of, they're always on the same list. And I don't think people understand actually what these groups do. So I'm just going to talk about what we've done from within the group as a sense of place. Because I firmly believe that these groups are making the place. And um, there's a couple of tips about what we've done and how we've gone around challenges that we've had. So the two groups that I'm going to talk about are in the East Midlands. One of them is the Hallerton Field Work Group and one is the Rutland Local History and Record Society. Um, I'm a member of both. I'll just put this up here so you can see they look fairly similar, although Hallerton is work, um, based around a smaller area. Um, one of the main things that I think is different is these. Um, the whole of the Hallerton group are seen as members and they drive the committee. The committee members more or less do what the members tell us to do. I think you'll find that's right, there's people here. The um, Rutland Local History Society, their executive committee is definitely top down. And the initiatives that they do, people come and take part in it, but it's not driven by the membership. And I think that really um, affects the momentum of any future projects. Both have had um, HLF funding. Um, we are lucky that Vicky Score is part of the Hallerton Fieldwork Group and she gives amazing guidance and helps drive that momentum forward. The Local History Society, they have a more or less academic um, publication of record, <coughs> record and a populist newsletter um, for members and that, is, um, that goes um, international as well and it's often referred to, articles are often referred to. Um, we have monthly meetings, um, the Rutland Local History Society have lectures, but they also have village visits where in the 56 parishes we go in, we look at the history, the archaeology, the people, and we have about 80 people attend those. Um, both take part in archaeological and historical work, similar feats, equal gender mix actually, um, varying abilities of ages, different professionals, we've got data management, press officers, and council workers have got a huge um, board, including local authority and museum personnel. So I'm going to talk about the Hallerton Field Work Group just to start off with. This was the Lost Chapel of St Morale that we found it. This is where the bottle kicking starts in Hallerton. It was on all over the news yesterday, a bizarre practice of two groups of men kicking the crap of each other down a hill to get a bottle over a river. Um, initially, the Hamilton Field Work Group had done geophysics here and thought we've got a Roman site. Started to dig, bodies started coming up. There's a famous picture of hand holding a couple. Um, and so this is their web page, which took a lot of work not to produce in order to get them to let us put a web page up and hook a closed Facebook group. And I'll explain, explain why. So, Hamilton. Um, initially, um, in Leicestershire and Rutland, there's a fanta there was a fantastic initiative called the Heritage Warden Network. All the parishes in Rutland and Leicestershire had a Heritage Warden, taught us about um, the natural environment and the built environment, including archaeology, and each of those wardens spoke to all the people in the village. Highton started off on that, started field walking, and found one of the biggest corners that ever found. So then, over 5,000 um, Iron Age coins, Roman helmet, um, and that led to a massive HLF funding and historic excavation. Um, there's a huge display at Market Harbour and a touring exhibition. The heritage crime that started at the site, the whole community got involved in this. Um, there's a whole lecture that goes on about the heritage crime, as in they went to the police and said, um, we're being robbed, and the police said, what are you being robbed of? They said, we don't know, because it's been taken out of the ground. This was quite a while ago. The police weren't really that interested, so the whole community got involved. Um, there were cameras in hedges, all the community <laughs> were um, writing down number plates and, and cars going in the village. And what caught the criminals was, years ago, some of your younger people might not know this, but local shops used to put a label of their price on a beer bottle with, I don't know, Bill Store in Newcastle, and these um, criminals had thrown their beer bottle away. So there was a day trip out to this village where this beer bottle was found, and they found the criminals, they took evidence, they didn't confront them, and gave it to the police, and it led to a prosecution. And that was the whole community, people who had never been involved in anything like this before. There's a local village museum called the 
Tim's have started off with the horde, but now it has progressive. Um, each year there's a new exhibition about the place, about the buildings, about the people. Um, develop a liaison, anybody wants to build a house there, and this is how we've spoken to the Hallerton group. Um, <laughs> I've got a planning commentary given because Ken and Hazel Wallace, who um, were one of the original founders, um, a new up and coming planning officer on the Horde site, um, a big barn was going to be built, which we knew needed a house with it eventually. And so they went and explained to the planning officer that the hedge that was put in the enclosure period was not there during the Iron Age, and therefore the site might go over the boundary. Um, and also, most people in, know about the group, there's quite a few villages surrounding, and they all include all our information in their newsletter. Um, and there's considerable momentum, so we didn't just stick at the Hall site. We've done a growing filler on the outskirts, we've got lots of information, um, the farmers trust us as well. Um, and but the closed Facebook group was because of this heritage crime. Because as soon as we say we're excavating, people come in at night and start taking stuff. And that happened at the St. Morale site last year. But um, we have people within our group who are registered metal detectors. They're all part of the WSI. Um, and, um, and so we've pretty much cleaned it as much as we possibly can before. And it's, a, it's next to a public footpath as well. And then we look at Butland History Society. The web page, I think, says it's all. It's quite academic. It's Oh, the um, ex-head of IBM runs it, so we've got a huge resource of material here, all about our county, and we also cover some of the 56 parishes who are unable to have a web provision. But here, there was HLF funding of the Heritage of Rutland Water. A lot of our work goes straight to digital. Um, it takes a couple of years for our annual publication to go to digital, because it's not fair on members who are paying that membership, but it's all free. Heritage crime again. We had a Bronze Age hill fort that was a corner of it was taken out by somebody doing a sunken garden. Immediately, the heritage warden, although this scheme doesn't exist every, anymore, we all think it does, so we still carry on doing the work. And the heritage warden reports it to Historic England, to the police, nothing, but even to the local council. It's taken two years to get feedback from Historic England to say, yes, um, we are dealing with this and the owner is working with us. In the meantime, because nothing was done, the owner thought, oh, nothing's being done, we'll have a pond on the other side. And the contractor took away another part of the um, Bronze Age hill fort. But now um, the owners are working um, to have, um, I think, uh, is it called a punishment trench across the middle of their garden? Um, we also have um, <laughs> the the Fields Environment Awards, we're really wanting to work with developers and initially we were working with the council up until last year and they've reduced their conservation officer and their planning officer um, role considerably. But we have these awards in Open Castle and we award architects or individuals who um, have um, built or renovated a property. Um, the local museum um, are amazing, all our field work and stuff goes on archive storage, and we've got a massive study room. Um, we have unpublished archaeology work in the summary. Um, the field walking group are currently finding lots of upper Paleolithic finds, and they're the ones who provide our constant changing momentum. I don't know if you're aware of the Parish Council Forum. Non-designated code. He didn't mention anything, and um, people who know me know I didn't sit there quietly. So every county has a parish council forum. Representatives of every parish council go to this forum. So we were given 15 minutes. Can you believe that? Um, and um, we were able to tell them about all the resources that were available: the HDR, the study room, all the different work and, and resources that our group had in order to inform the neighbourhood plans. And we did quite well because we followed GDPR, so people were quite happy with us. And also, we've got North Luffenham Air Force Base that's going to be a garden village. So rather than say, you can't have that, we thought we'd show impartiality and say, all the heritage that's available, 
they've only got the four missile sites on there. They haven't even looked at the early medieval or Anglo-Saxon burial that was there, the moot point and the lost villages that are underneath. Um, we sent the letter, they acknowledged it, it's been ignored. So what we're doing is we're going to do our next village visit next to where the site is and give all the information to the locals. But we have poor county media support because it's a conglomerate who's now bought the Stamford Mercury. So we, our awards got taken off the front page by a cat that had been missing for five years <laughs> that suddenly turned up. The field walking group are amazing. So before the development was even went to planning, we walked about 10 or 15 years ago a site that Law Holmes took. <coughs> and all our work goes on the HER. As um, somebody said before, a housing estate is new there. We, we, the developers concerned that human moraines to trap on the house. So what we do is, as soon as the law homes leave, we put a leaflet through their door saying, who do you think we are? Did you know there was an Iron Age village here that's over 2,000 years old underneath where you live? And we've increased our membership by that. And Bloor Homes um, won't let us go in or give us leaflets, so we kind of go around it. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, very quickly, um, both groups are on the list. They offered mentoring to other groups. The, community, the um, Supporting Community Archaeology in the UK, CBAO Research, has all this information there, but it doesn't have the micro level that I've been talking about today in the initiatives. They're the ones who are providing a sense of place on their own. And, and the engagement with the outside organisations, um, I remember I'm speaking as an independent, lacks, um, a, shows a complete lack of capacity in local authority and some national organisations. And I don't feel that there's any evidence yet of sustained local engagement because we are the engagement. And I also feel that as I've showed between the two groups, what works for one group may not apply to another um, because of the people themselves. So I've just lifted a quote from the Historic England placemaking um, and design. Um, yes, they're recognising that they're not homogenous, and it takes sustained, and I think that's a key word I forgot to highlight, is sustained. Um, everyone here has spoken about projects that they've had for a year, two years. The, the actual societies I've shown you are 20 years and 40 years. They are working it, and um, I think you do need to have a very clear idea of who you're engaging with because it's people. It's not some digital provision that you're talking about. You have to understand the people to see what they want to do and what they can do. Thank you.